Welcome back to Mind Pump TV, guys. I'm your host, Danny Matranga. Today, we are going to deep dive into the squat, and I'm going to share with you the four biggest problems all new lifters make. And if you do not fix these soon, they could cause problems down the road for progression and also lead to unnecessary injury. <music> A lot of lifters have the hardest time finding where their foot should be, and they find a spot that's okay, but perhaps it's not optimal. So for a general rule of thumb, this is not for everybody, but for a general rule of thumb, I recommend feet outside shoulder width, but not by a whole heck of a lot, maybe one to two inches. Feet are not going to be pointed straight ahead. I actually like my feet outward. 10 to 15 degrees. We call that external rotation. I'm just taking my toes and I'm pointing them slightly outward. What that does is it gives my hip more room to move and it gets my glutes somewhat involved, especially as I come up. You'll notice if my feet are too close and I try to squat down, I don't have a ton of room for my hips to open up. Okay. If my feet are too wide, I'm going to run into the same problem. I'm going to get quite a bit of knee bend, but my hips are going to run out of space pretty damn soon as well. Because that top of the hip bone or the, that femur, when it runs into a bony structure like my pelvis, I'm not going anywhere. So here and here, I'm not really working with my structure. But if I get into a position like this, I give my knees and my hips a better chance to work together. I can squat down, okay? Notice normally I'd be running out of space, but I give that hip space to work, and I can get down here into what would normally be the bottom of my squat. If you look at it from the side, you'll notice that in this position, I can keep my back relatively straight. That's something that we're looking for. So as you pick your stance, remember you're looking to give your body space to get low, how low is going to be dependent on how long you've been lifting, how mobile you are, but do not make the mistake of being too close or too wide. I like to have most of my people somewhere in the middle. Second tip, guys, breathing and bracing. When you do a squat, specifically with a barbell, even more so when it's heavy, you want to have your core, and that's not just this part, engaged to protect your back and spine. So how we best do that when lifting is with breathing and bracing. If I take a deep breath in and hold, create rigidity, act like I'm going to push that breath out, but I don't. A lot of times people will say to push your tongue against the roof of your mouth. I create a very hard and rigid structure from my abs to my obliques and even to some of the musculature that goes into my back. I create a stable place. So what I recommend clients do when they have the barbell on their back and they found their foot position, before they do reps, again, even with the bar, practice your breathing and bracing. Before you descend, breathe into your belly, get some expansion through here, hold tight, squat. You can replace that breath at the top if you like. Again, for advanced power lifters and weight lifters, there's a maneuver. They call it the Valsalva. You can look that up. But for most people, I recommend getting rigid before you descend each rep. That's going to get your core in. That's going to give you the best chance of squatting safely and effectively. So third tip, do not bounce out of the bottom. Try to minimize that rebound effect. While power lifters and Olympic weightlifters might get a ton of added benefit from bouncing out of the bottom, right? Because there's an elastic effect, a rebound, if you will. For just a general population lifter looking to build a little bit of muscle and just get generally stronger, okay? They're not trying to be the strongest person, move the most weight possible. There's not a ton of benefit to bouncing out of the bottom of your squat. So I often recommend clients, I'll show you from the side, in place of dropping down fast and just bouncing out and snapping out. I recommend coming down, finding the bottom of your squat, holding for one to two seconds, and then coming up. The real, real big problem you'll see with that bounce 
is when people have what we call a butt wink or their spine rounds, and then you end up bouncing with that rounded spine. You put a lot of unnecessary strain. You might just be better off pausing to a shallower depth or squatting down, pausing, and then coming up. So the main take home point, don't bounce out of the bottom, pause long enough to feel that position, gather control, and then come up explosively. Use your muscles to generate force, not that elastic rebound. If you're a weightlifter, powerlifter, a little bit of a different story. General population person just looking to be strong, control the entire range. All right, last tip. This is the number one thing I think that's frustrated me more than anything in my time coaching, especially when I was working in commercial gyms because I've seen it so much, specifically with the ladies, and that is unnecessary hyperextension of the hips. So remember, the glutes, the butt, those are what we call hip extensors. They extend the hip. They push the hip forward. Somewhere along the way, somebody thought, if I'm squatting, then I have the bar on my back, and I extend my hips, I'll get my glutes, which is totally correct. Your squats work with some other muscles like the adductors and the hamstrings to help extend the hip. However, they don't do a very good job of hyperextending the hip with a bar on your back standing straight up. Okay, they're better when you're on your back doing something like a hip thrust. So you have a situation where you have this bar on your back and you have a lifter who thinks, I'm gonna hit my glutes by jamming my hips into hyperextension and squeezing my glutes hard. But what happens is there's not a lot of weight or resistance for your glutes to move. So what you do is you have this weight on your back you move your hips into extension, which is okay, but then you go into hyperextension to really feel that squeeze, and now you have a ton of pressure unnecessarily on your low back because the weight's not going into the glutes, it's going straight down your spine. So don't do this at the top of your squat. We've seen it all a million times. At this, Instead, just come up, squeeze, and be done with it. Come up, squeeze, and be done with it. Do not hyperextend at the top. There's really no reason to do that. And over time, it could cause unnecessary and unwarranted stress on the body. So remember, foot positioning is very unique to the individual and you wanna find that groove or that right spot for you. Once you've got your feet in the right place, you're gonna be in a good position to squat. From there, Breathing is huge, especially as we get to heavier and heavier loads. We want to be able to use our breathing and our bracing techniques to stabilize and protect our spine, our back, and all the other stuff involved in the squat. Also, don't forget when you go to the bottom of the squat, don't bounce out of the hole unless, of course, you're a power lifter or an Olympic lifter and producing force is necessary. There's no need to bounce out of the hole. And no matter what you do, when you get to the top, squeeze your glutes, but don't hyper extend your back, putting your spine into unnecessary flexion. Those are just things in wear and tear you don't need, and it's not even going to help you out. So remember, guys, like the channel, subscribe, and check out our free Squat Like a Pro guide. Link below for that in the bio. It'll be a nice continuation of the things we talked about today. Thanks so much for tuning into Mind Pump TV. Have a good one.